Hello everybody, welcome to Our Culture Gaming, I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello Scott. Josh and my friend, did you know that Uncharted made $51 million across the weekend? That's insane. It is a bit, to be honest. A lot of people seem to really, really love the idea of Tom Holland as Nathan Drake. And we thought that because of that, we'd round up every single TV show, movie thing, or all the most ridiculous ones anyway, that are in development. Because there's some mad S doing the rounds <laughs> that's currently being put together in a, in a passive medium, let's say, taking video games and adapting them as best as can be. First thing to talk about is a Demon Soul movie. Something that has largely been overlooked because it was accompanying the Horizon Zero Dawn slash Forbidden West adaptation, which in itself didn't get talked about too much, um, but came from giantfreakingrobot.com, <laughs> uh, known for leaking various Hollywood things over the years. They talked about Doctor Strange 2 before it was um, you know, out there officially, um, and showed some footage and stuff. Um, the Demon Souls movie, like I said, is coming from PlayStation Productions, but what do you think of that? Do you think we're going to get some random new protagonist? Well, some Mark Wahlberg-esque <laughs> dude? Probably, why not? In? Why not, me? Uh, give, give, give Mark Wahlberg a little moustache and get, put him in there. To be uh, fair, I would, I would massively take a Mark Wahlberg Demon Souls uh, movie. Uh, that sounds I think like, I would take that. like the end of culture. But when it comes <laughs> to uh, this uh, movie in particular, man, like yes. normally when these adaptations get announced, I'm the one going, Scott, like it might be all right. You know, it's like think positive. With yes. Demon Souls, though, I just can't see how that's going to be an easy thing to adapt. Obviously, there's a story to Demon Souls, but yes. like a lot of From Software games, it is very, in parts, abstract and opaque, and a lot of the story comes from you interacting with the game itself, you know, mm. with the game world, with the mechanics, with the NPCs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And to me, the enjoyment of FromSoft games, uh, whilst the art style is excellent, whilst the story and characters are cool, yes. is the actual playing of it. So to me, I look at a Demon Souls adaptation and I think, w what can this bring <laughs> that the games couldn't? I think all of these, nearly all of these things, I don't know why we're getting all of them now. There was a whole burst of different adaptations potentially um, coming to life across the 2000s that all got delayed. Splinter Cell, uh, Uncharted, whatever we'll get into more of those things as we go but it feels like because the Sonic movie took off all of a sudden it's just okay what have you got let's just do all these things and obviously PlayStation Productions get, you know they're trying to raise brand awareness for all sorts of different IPs that they want to get off the ground even more hence their new animations and everything else um, you know, in, in front of the games and stuff. So I think they're just going, Sony's just going, what have we got? What's, yeah. a, what's a thing that people know? Let's do a Souls movie. And the <laughs> idea of a, the soul, a Souls movie is kind of cool. I would totally do Dark Souls, though. If I, I was going to do you? either, I then why not? Do you do a Bloodborne movie or something? I would definitely... I would oh, definitely, say, if this it? was a, sorry for shouting, the limiter is going off. If this was a Bloodborne movie, I, it's, I'd be more in, because I think that world is, it's obviously, in my opinion, more, on, more, in. more inspired by, um, you know, stuff that is movies to begin with. That was such a good sentence. You know, it's inspired by Lovecraft stuff. It's inspired yes. by um, Bram Stoker-style horror. Mm. And I think that's easier to adapt and make into a movie than Demon's Souls. Yes. No, I massively agree. I, honestly, I'll take anything other than a Demon's Souls movie, but mm. I, I'm positing it to the audience that if you put Mark Wahlberg in anything other than Uncharted, I don't know it that. makes it better. Just put him in Demon's Souls, put him in Bloodborne, his little coat, little hat on. I, I would take one. it. MedicineMask.com, mm. I would be a big fan. Anyway, next thing is a Call of Duty movie starring The Rock. Now, The Rock put out there that he was bringing one of the biggest, most badass games to the big screen, which another, it's another one from Giant Freaking Robot, diving in there to confirm that it is actually Call of Duty. What do you think of a The Rock-fronted Call of Duty movie? I mean, it's the end of culture again, <laughs> twice in two days. <laughs> uh, End it again? No, 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 I think this would actually, it's, it's, it would be fun. Yes. It makes a lot of sense. They've been trying to make a Call of Duty game uh, for a long movie. time. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, movie. Uh, for a long, long time, Dwayne, The Rock, John and obviously one of the biggest movie stars in the world. If you're going to pair the biggest game franchise with one of the biggest movie stars, mm. it makes sense to bring them together to make the most amount of money possible. It's David Brandt. Yeah, David Brandt. And I Brandit. think with The Rock, you know, he mentioned he teased, he said he was going to be in a video game movie and he said it's something he's been playing for a while, which got me thinking, what games would The Rock play? And I imagine <laughs> The Rock plays Call of Duty, you know? Well, everyone plays Call of Duty, so it makes sense. One question, did you see Rampage? I did not, not this see week's Rampage. wrestling show, I mean the actual Rampage adaptation. I think, but I heard it was all right. It's honestly, it's genuinely really good. Yeah. Like it's, especially the back half of that. I think that if he takes that general approach of just having fun with it yeah. and just acknowledging the fact that we play these games to be big and dumb and stupid and over the top, then there is probably a way to do a Call of Duty movie. Um, I wonder which story they take. I think that's a whole thing that can be up in the air. There's all sorts of different time periods. There's whether you do modern warfare or the old school stuff or the future stuff. Yeah. If I get the rock with some boosters, That'd be just right. doing little advanced warfare boosts, then maybe that would be I cool. don't think they do it, but I would take a Black Ops 1 style adaptation 
You know, there's a little bit of mystery, mis- mystery there. There's a little bit of a intrigue, a bit of a bit of espionage. That's what I would like. Cheeky espionage. Speaking of things that you might take, would you like an Anthony Mackie twisted metal comedy? Now this, now we knew the twisted metal uh, yeah. show was coming for a long time. Um, this has been updated very recently, saying that Anthony Mackie is um, on board to play the lead character. Apparently, the show overall is about some motor-mouthed outsider meeting up with Sweet Tooth, who's the cl- the famous clown, the iconic clown from the twisted metal series, and um, potentially played by Will Arnett, which was a weird choice. I like Will Arnett, fine enough, Batman, big fan, but it's a weird connection for him to apparently cameo as uh, Sweet Tooth while Anthony Mackie does this overall, what is described as a comedy from the writers of Deadpool. So, well, weird, it kind of makes sense. The thing is, but, right, yeah. I don't really have any affection for Twisted Metal. It's right. not something I grew up with, it's not something I'm intimately uh, knowledgeable about, but going off your reactions this morning with every single nugget of information you uncovered, <laughs> this, what like, what do you think about this? Because this seems like a lot and potentially different from mm. what a Twisted Metal fan would want out of an adaptation. I think there's, there's a way to do it. I really like Deadpool. Um, I prefer Deadpool 1. I think that's the thing. It's a lot of disparate elements. I love yeah. Anthony Mackie, love Will, like, you know, like Will Arnett enough, love Sweet Tooth, love the idea of them going for a, a comedy approach. I think there's a way to do that um, that fits way better with the overall tone of Twisted Metal than trying to do it all gritty and serious and 90s in the way that it kind of was. It always had a bit of a sense of humor anyway, um, but I think that's maybe one of the only ways that you can do a modern version of it. So I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. Okay. It feels very considered, um, and it's one of those things where you know they're bringing back Twisted Metal as an IP anyway in game form, um, and because something like Destruction All Stars was a complete mess, then you know you you hope that they would get this right. What if I said Go do on. Carmageddon instead? Then I would say I'd probably be up for it. Who would you cast as the, <laughs> the mad bald lad, though? Ah, uh, no, the guy from the Tizer advert. <laughs> <laughs> to Maybe. be fair, that would massively work. Now, another thing that was very recently announced was a collection of different adaptations all at once. Uh, yes, Disco Elysium, which is a massive deal. Life is Strange. Um, it Takes Two is getting adapted. Mr. Yeah. Joseph Farris, who might make might make his way to the Oscars, so he can say <laughs> F the Oscars. As I can know. actually see the It Takes Two adaptation being made. I think mm. that would hit with, you know, uh, children as well as adults. I think that's got a lot of um, cross-age appeal. and I that think, elephant scene? Yeah, well, exactly. The, the characters in that game are already so charming and so well-written mm. that I think they're easily transferred over to an animated um, you know, movie or TV show, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. You only said it 30 seconds ago. <laughs> but the point is, I think out of the, out of those games that you mentioned there, yes. I think that's the one that I can see succeeding the most, even though I, Disco Elysium is one of my favorite games of all time. Mm. Like, that's going to be a tough thing to adapt. And please, I'm not doing that. Yes, I don't know how you do the Disco Elysium thing there's yeah. so much player agency and that's my overall ground rule with all of these is like how much player agency is in the thing and how does that affect the overall feel of the value of it like what can you actually replicate Disco Elysium like you said one of the biggest scripts of all time in gaming like yeah. so many choices so many branching paths so many endings and um, that seems like a hell of a thing to do it takes two as a more natural fit um, but also alongside this um, Life is Strange obviously can absolutely be done yeah. um, even though it is a branching path thing but I think the feel of that IP totally works totally. Um, but yeah also mentioned along the side here is is a My Friend Pedro adaptation. <laughs> One of my favorite games, but it's a, about a, a skateboarding, twin pistol toting, slow motion killer. That doesn't who, sound like your thing. Who listens what? to a talking banana whilst a synthwave soundtrack plays in the background. Now, it's almost surgically created to be exactly <laughs> my thing. Um, but yeah, that's that's being um, adapted by Derek Kolstad, who did uh, John Wick. He was yes. the writer on the first two John Wicks. Um, so that's a big old deal as well. It's described as a dramedy, mm. which is kind of what the genre is. But yeah, I'm not going to dwell on that too much because I know many, many people haven't really played it, go play my friend Pedro. It's really good. Um, next thing down though is something that has been talked about a little bit, but we didn't know when we were putting these notes together um, that it's actually been directed by Chad Stahelski, and that's the Ghost of Tsushima movie. Yes, which man. The, he's a perfect fit for that, dude. I think like that is just going to be a, a great, great movie. Mm. Obviously, it's incredibly inspired by movies to begin with, mm-hmm. and you get that director, you get that material. Like that should be a home run. I think yes. if you're going to make a movie of anything that Sony has done recently, I think that is. The, not the easiest one to adapt, but the mm. one that makes the most sense because, you know, we've th- th- there's a reference point for it. If you yes. look at something like Horizon, which is also being adapted, like that seems like a trickier sell because Horizon's world, and I'm not saying this to disparage um, Ghost of Tsushima, but Horizon's world, it was so unique and it's something that's difficult to visualize and in my opinion, to get right in an adaptation. Mm-hmm. But Ghost of Tsushima, you have those touchstones, you have those reference points already. You've got mm. a great story, you've got great characters, and now you've got a great director on top. Do they cast Chris Pratt? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, 
get Chris Pratt for every character. Just just do it. I mean, why not at this point? Just Mark sure. Wahlberg's yeah. Jin Sakai. Yeah, yeah, get sure. on the uh, Shakahachi. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm a big fan. But yeah, um, Chad Stahelski doing that, um, like Josh says, is, is a perfect combination. At least that means, because dude's from John Wick, if yeah. you don't know. Um, and I think that at least they get the fight choreography down and the source material's there. It's quite an easy three act structure to do. Um, good moral message and everything else. Um, next thing down is um, Fallout on Amazon Prime, which again has been talked about a little bit, but it's now got some of its cast coming together. Um, with Walton Goggins confirmed as a main role. Walton Goggins from The Shield, yeah. from all sorts of different things. Um, I thought that meant he was going to be the protagonist, but apparently he's rumored to be just a ghoul. So yeah. I don't know what that's going to be. No, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm so up in the air on the Fallout TV show because mm. it's such a great world for my favorite um, video game series. Uh, but because it's an RPG, like there's so many different ways you could take it. Mm. But because Walton Goggins is on board now, like you said, like I'm, I'm here. I would watch <laughs> Walton Goggins in anything. He's one of my favorite character actors. He's Gog, never Gog, disappointed me. And I think it brings this show <laughs> like a sense of pedigree now. You know what I mean? Like he's a real like kind of um, actor's actor, as they would say. And I feel like this game it something would you not say that Scott you're going to be like that you like you wouldn't say that I don't think of Walton Goggins that like that high I like the guy I like him a lot like I mean my main reference point is in The Shield best TV show of all time where he plays Shane Aye. but that was 2007 that was a long time ago I've not seen him do anything as incredible as that maybe I'm forgetting something really obvious um, but yeah the, overall though, the idea of a Fallout uh, TV show especially on Amazon hopefully it captures something of the identity of the games um, because I think looking at the likes of Halo there's a very pristine clean way for yeah. things to go I know it's on Paramount but it just seems like something like Wheel of Time for example on Amazon or even the new Lord of the Rings stuff um, everything looks very clean and pristine because they're still selling you a 4k package every month so everything needs to be as clean as possible <laughs> and, uh, and that always jars with me with things that have uh, more of an identity maybe rooted in uh, graininess um, next thing down is Netflix's Assassin's Creed live action stuff however there's more to this and um, once you dig into it it's not just a live action thing that got announced if you knew about that anyway um, they actually announced um, a series of things going forward adapted from various storylines in the overall franchise saying that they'll be making live action stuff animated stuff and anime stuff okay. so it just seems like Ubisoft and Netflix are very much getting into bed together to do all sorts of different things I could absolutely see an Assassin's Creed anime working quite well I feel way like that better than a live action one absolutely yeah. I mean we, we <laughs> saw the movie version with Michael Fassbender in and it wasn't that good so I feel like that could translate really well to an anime kind of like format especially when you've got like all of these different historical periods mm. you could um, you know uh, adapt and then take over and you could visualize them in potentially a way that that's better than doing it in a live action, but obviously they're doing that as well. I don't know, Assassin's Creed is such a behemoth. The thing it's is, such a conglomerated thing that, sure. The thing is, any adapted thing in animation, for me, if you're adapting from a video game, anime just, animation or anime just fits better. Right. Castlevania is pristine in every single way. The Dota adaptation is great. Dragon's Dogma is solid. Like, it just feels like you can do more with pure animation that lines up with the over-the-top acrobatic nature of video games anyway, in a way that live action struggles to meet. Yeah. And so for me, I'm always gonna go down the animation or anime is better. Um, and there's also things like the Devil May Cry thing is coming. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. Um, but to drill down on another thing, how is Tom Hardy Splinter Cell? How does that this, sound? That is never you? happening. That was announced like so long ago that if that does happen, I will I will be surprised and I would so, enjoy it because Tom Hardy is good. But like, is it going to happen? The thing is, is it going to happen? This first got mentioned back in 2004. Anyone who remembers playing Chaos Theory will remember that in the main menu of that original release, you could watch a teaser for the Splinter Cell movie. All that was was the three goggles, yeah. and it said coming soon. It wasn't coming soon. <laughs> and now we're what 16, 17 years later yeah. or whatever. And um, there was an update in 2017 saying that the project is still in the works as of the end of 2017 um, and some of the writers were saying that they'd confirmed the script or they finished the script um, and they were about to give it to Tom Hardy and they were looking forward to getting it done that year that was 2017 <laughs> so it's still on the cards it's still in the works like the Firewatch adaptation which yeah. is a whole other thing but what do you th I mean that we'll get on to my last one in a second what do you think of one of the pillars of stealth I mean, his way I mean if it ever happened I would enjoy it I think that's really Tom cool Tom Hardy is Sam Fisher? I know it's not. It's a, it's a kind of like Blacklist style Sam Fisher, I would say. I was thinking perhaps. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe, like not, maybe not like the classic um, version of Sam. Mm. But when it comes to all of this Ubisoft stuff, yes. I don't believe that any of them are going to get made because they announced <laughs> this, like you said, in 2004. They announced the Division movie with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Jessica Chastain. Yeah. Now they've announced Assassin's Creed There's and all of this. Is it Beyond Good and Evil thing as yeah, well? Yeah, they've been threatening to make movies and TV shows <laughs> for years and years, and it's, it's never happened yet. And no. I hope they get it off the ground. I hope things are really good, but it's like, I'm not holding my breath for them. No, there's also a Rabbids adaptation mentioned as well. The thing is, if you go down the, the Ubisoft rabbit hole, pretty much every one of their IP... Rabbit hole? Rabbit, rabbit hole Damn, is scheduled 
for something to come up because they've yeah they've nigh on uh, they've talked about every single thing coming to live action coming to animation and anime at some point it seems like Assassin's Creed further along um, Splinter Cell they've been trying to get off the ground for almost two decades um, but there was an update in 2017 speaking of stealth stuff though I, I was going to say Isaac Clarke that's Dead Space that's not being adapted yet um, Oscar Isaac's Metal Gear Solid as, yeah. a, as a full name yeah now this this is in a weird one because um, <clears throat> currently attached to it in terms of writing the script and directing is Jordan Vaux Roberts from Kong Skull Island um, who did a whole sit down thing with Hideo Kojima and said that he finished the script and Kojima signed off on it and he's very ha- they're both very happy with how that's come together um, but they're waiting on it being signed off by Sony and uh, Konami they've said it needs to be signed off by the higher ups um, but Oscar Isaac has been tapped to play Solid Snake so it seems like all that stuff is coming together it's just taking forever yeah totally I mean I wouldn't believe this thing was ever going to happen if Oscar mm. Isaac wasn't, you know, announced, and he obviously seems really interested in the material and the character. Mm. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we've not seen anything for this for a while. And Scott, I'm not going to make the mistakes that I made when I was like 11 years old. Okay, and I was on IMDb almost <laughs> weekly, looking Remember to the see IMDb forums. Exactly. What a time? I was looking to see if there was any update on the Metal Gear Solid movie that was announced way back when. Mm. So I like that Oscar Isaac is attached. It makes me more confident. But this is going to be a difficult thing to get off the ground. I hope they managed to do it well. I'm interested to see what they adapt when it comes to this. Like, do they take the story of the first game? Do they go back in time and do Big Boss? Like, or do they try mm. to merge them? Like, there's so many opportunities uh, in avenues to go down with mm. this, but it's just a case of I want to see a bit more momentum on it. I want to see, now that we've got our lead actor, I want to see uh, the other cast come on board. Yeah, so Bill Roberts had talked about, because um, he said the same thing, massive fan of the games, grew up on them, said that it's very, Metal Gear has a very specific tone, and that was one thing that he wanted to get right, so it's very hard to do in um, passive entertainment, obviously that's one thing that just came from the games being in the world yeah. and so he kind of motioned to the idea of creating something new um, and melding various storylines together and that's how you make a Metal Gear movie but who even knows it? <laughs> it's been a long time Metal Gear Solid 5 was 2015 and no one even cares about Metal Gear Survive so it's been a long time coming um, to reel off some other stuff because honestly what, like I said once you start going down this route this guy this guy this morning this was supposed to be like a quick and easy video <laughs> and he just kept coming up with things like Josh you know this is being made Josh you know this is being made hours we were on for <laughs> just collating all of this stuff so please tell me what you found oh deep breath so uh, this isn't even everything but there's a lot more to talk about obviously we know about Kevin Hart's Borderlands I'm always going to refer to it as that Chris Pratt's Mario also another thing (laughs) that we know is coming Netflix are doing a Bioshock adaptation Um, a Knuckles TV show also starring Idris Elba has recently been confirmed um, coming to Paramount Plus Cyberpunk Edge Runners is still coming Yes. and that was something that was announced back when the game was about to come out a couple years ago but it's an anime thing that's going to be on Netflix and that's back in in vogue again because Cyberpunk has saved itself and it's brilliant Josh Brown go play it everyone who can hear my voice. Um, a Yakuza movie is being made according to Variety, mm. um, but there's no more details on that other than they are attempting to do some sort of Yakuza movie. Um, a Tomb Raider anime by Netflix is coming. We know that HBO's The Last of Us is coming. Um, I also, I've, I've doubled up on Chris Pratt's Mario. That's how much <laughs> I wanted to talk about Chris Pratt's Mario. I put asterisks around it and everything. Um, Sonic 2 we know is coming in April. You mentioned The Division earlier on. Resident Evil live action movies coming to Netflix. And the Mortal Kombat sequel is yep. also coming. That's alongside Mega Man and all sorts of other toss. Tomb Raider 2 together. was the one I thought of there. You Tomb mentioned Raider the animated 2? series, but that's also happening. I'll take an anime. Happening. I just want an You anime. will take anything in anime. Yeah. If I know anything about you, Scott Telford, it's that. A Mark Wahlberg anime? No, I'm gone. I'm actually, I'm, that's how you done. I'm, I'm out. I'm out of it. <laughs> Look, just between me and you, a Mark Wahlberg anime with a big sword, it'd be pretty damn good. But anyway, it's What Calls You Gaming. I've been Scott Telford, joined by Josh Brown, and we'll catch you very soon. Bye. Bye.